So this video is for section 2.7, solving limits as they approach infinity. And in this video, we're going to go through section, or sorry, number nine in your textbook, the limit as it approaches infinity of this thing here. And we're also going to go through three different ways of how to approach these types of problems and how to think about them. And hopefully at least one of these ways will work well for you and you'll be able to better understand this section. Okay, so we have this problem here. The first way we're going to go through it um, and solve it is algebraically. So if you're like me, you need a concrete step by step. This is how you solve this problem. This is the way for you. So whenever you have limits that approach infinity, the way you solve these is you take the leading term in the denominator. And by leading term, I just mean the variable with the highest power. So in this case, that'd be x to the fourth. You take that leading term, and you're going to divide every other term, both in the denominator and in the numerator, by that leading term. So let's go through what I mean by this. So I have 3x squared plus 20x, I'm going to leave some space, um, and on the denominator, I have 2x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus 29. Okay, I take my leading term, which is x to the fourth, and put everything over x to the fourth. And from here, I'm going to cross out my common terms. So starting with uh, my denominator here, I have three, or sorry, numerator, I have 3x squared over x to the fourth. The x's cancel, and I'm left with just 3 over x squared. Plus, over here, 20x over x to the fourth. Again, the x's cancel, and I'm left with 20 over x cubed. And then on the denominator, um, here, the x to the fourths, they cancel out, and I'm left with just 2. Plus, over here, I left with 1x on the bottom, 3 over x uh, minus, oops, minus 29 over x to the 4th. Nothing cancels. I just had 29 over x to the 4th. Okay. From here, what you do is if you ever have a number over x in this fraction, you can just cancel it out. That becomes 0. Okay. So 3 over x squared, that's 0. 20 over x cubed, that becomes 0. 3 over x is 0. 29 over x to the fourth is zero. And the reason why we do this is something we'll talk about more in the conceptually column. Um, but just think about it. If you have a limit that's approaching infinity, you have a super, super big number on the denominator here. If you have a super, super big number being divided into a small number, how many times does that super big number go into that small number? Basically zero times. So that's why every time you have a number over x, or over infinity, you cross that out, becomes zero. All right, so now I see what I'm left with. On the top, I have just zero. On the bottom, I have two plus zero, which is just two. Zero over any number just becomes zero. So my answer for this problem, the limit as x approaches infinity of that function is equal to zero. Let me write that down. Okay, um, so my limit is equal to zero. I know that. This is an algebraic way of how I solve that problem. But you can also just go through this problem using rules. If you're one who likes to memorize rules, this is the way for you. Okay, um, so using rules, if I have a fraction like this, and I have a smaller degree in the numerator than I do in the denominator, like I did here, my leading term here was x squared, but my leading term in the denominator was x to the fourth, small on top, large on bottom, um, this limit will always equal zero. Limit as x approaches infinity, is always equal to zero for this type of fraction. If I have the same degree over the same degree, so let's just say these are both x to the third or something, then my limit um, is equal to the leading coefficient here, leading coefficient, I'm going to abbreviate things, over the leading coefficient on the bottom. Because think about it, if you were to go through this process again, and I, if I were to have an x to the fourth up here, um, instead of having zero, I'd have whatever this term is, which is three. And so instead of having zero as my answer, I'd have three over my leading term here, which is two. I'd have an actual value. I'd have the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. Okay, and last rule is if your larger degree is in the numerator and your smaller degree is in the denominator, this means it's approaching infinity or the limit does not exist. Limit as x approaches zero does not exist. Okay, and again, we're going to go through conceptually why all these rules make sense. Um, but also, just so you know, all these rules in this method that we're solving these problems here, it's the same thing for when you're solving for horizontal asymptotes later in this section. So everything we're using here for limits, you can apply to the um, asymptote problems as well. Okay, last thing we're going through is, what if we're just thinking about this conceptually? Why does this make sense? 
Okay, so we already kind of went through this first part. If we had a smaller degree over a larger degree, um, remember, we're going to infinity, right? And so let's think about which of these pulls more weight. On the top, if we had like x squared, and on the bottom, we had x to the fifth or something, we're going to the infinity. So infinity to the fifth is way, way, way bigger than infinity squared. Although well, infinity squared is still pretty big, but infinity to the fifth is so much bigger. So I have this really, really big number going into a relatively smaller number. Really big number going into small number, it's basically going to be zero times, right? Okay, if I had the same degree going into the same degree, well, which one has more power there? Which one carries more weight? They're both the same. Since they're both infinity to the cubed or to the third, they basically just cancel out, and I'm left with whatever those coefficients are. <clears throat> so in this example, it's 4 over 5. Now in this last part, if my larger degree is at the top, and um, I have a smaller degree in the denominator. Okay, now it's the reverse of this. Now I have a really big number in my numerator divided by a really, really small number. Well, how many times is it going to take that really small number to go into that huge number? Basically, an infinite number of times, which um, if the limit as x approaches any number is equal to infinity, technically that doesn't exist, but a lot of times teachers want you to write that as the answer that the limit um, as x approaches infinity of this value is equal to infinity. Just because it does tell you a lot about um, the behavior of the graph, even though it's not approaching an actual value, it tells you what the graph looks like because as x goes to infinity, um, the y values also go to infinity. Brief side note, but conceptually, that's why that rule makes sense. I have a super huge number in the top divided by a really small number in the bottom. Um, and also, if you have types of problems that don't have fractions, it's also really useful to think about it conceptually like this, just to think about, well, I have just this expression here. If I were to plug in infinity for my x's, what would happen? Um, so, yeah, these are three different ways to approach these types of problems. And remember, this works for both solving limits as x approaches infinity and for solving for horizontal asymptotes. I hope at least one of these ways worked for you, and hopefully this section makes a little bit more sense now. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what calculus class you're in, but all the sections and problems I referenced were from this textbook right here. And remember that if you're a registered Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sidrich. You can either schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment online or just drop in whenever you're available during our business hours for free tutoring. For more information, feel free to visit our website.